a experimental video on seeing if I can make a lassie using cheap uh, peaches from the supermarket. I don't know why peaches are cheap um, in the supermarket. Um, it's not as if they're particularly a, a inferior quality because they always taste so nice. So I don't know the reason why peaches are uh, come. You can get them like in cheap tins. There's obviously a reason for it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I kind of but mango pulp can be quite expensive. So I kind of thought, well, can we make a mango lassie using? Uh, well, it won't be mango because it'd be peaches. Uh, can we make it with uh, cheap uh, sliced peaches from the supermarket? Uh, and I think we can. And I think it'll have the same results because I used to work in a restaurant that used to their passion fruit ice cream, the basis of was it passion fruit ice cream or sorbet? No, it was passion fruit sorbet. The basis of that was actually mango, and then they used to put passion fruit seeds in. It was a really good restaurant as well. Naughty trick. But anyway, so uh, we'll pour the peaches, we'll add the yogurt, and then we'll kind of get to a consistency we kind of like. I have saved the juice from the peaches uh, just in case we need to uh, let it down. Uh, to uh, make it a little bit thinner without adding more yogurt or pulp, that type of thing. So, um, obviously depending on the thickness of the yogurt will depend on the thickness of the outcome of the lassie. Um, you will need less yogurt uh, the thicker it is. You can take, this is my homemade yogurt, um, there is a video um, for that. You can um, make normal uh, shop bought yogurt thicker by straining it through um, a muslin cloth. Uh, which takes out the liquid, which I'm going to call it's a whey like liquid. Uh, so you can do that to thicken up your yogurt, and that also goes in the in my yogurt video anyway. So we will puree. Excuse the um, blender; it's a bit old and it's getting a bit stained. But I'm not going to replace it until it breaks. And I don't really want to clean it with bleach. But anyway, so we'll pulp, and we'll see how we go. <laughs> So that's pulped, so as as always, as um, I always like to add a little bit and then see how we go, rather, because you can't, once you've added something, you can't really, it's very difficult to take away. So we'll go with two dessert spoons of yogurt for one tin, and we'll see how that goes. And then we'll taste and keep on, keep on going. <laughs> Certainly another one. I'm, th I'm thinking that you want to be able to suck it up through a straw, so I want to do that kind of consistency. So maybe another dessert spoon of yogurt. That'll probably be enough. Mmm, that's nice. Maybe a little bit of the juice. I'm not going to add any sugar because I don't think there's any need. Um, if you're making it for kids, you might want to think about adding a bit of sugar. Well, you yeah, probably don't want to add any sugar for the kids um, because. You really shouldn't be adding too much extra sugar for yourself either. You should uh, be lessening the amount of sugar that you have in your diet. Um, but sometimes you want to treat, so you can add sugar. So that was that was a couple of little table de dessert spoons of the juice, and we'll see how thickness how, how, see what that does to thickness. <laughs> That's lovely. That's really nice, is that? Um, unless you were uh, an expert on um, on the taste of mangoes, I don't think you'd be able to tell uh, that much difference. Um, certainly a nice drink to have. You can make it uh, still kind of quite thick. Um, but the all glasses I had are about that consistency. Uh, so I think that's about right. So, uh, one tin of drained peaches, which uh, says it's 250 grams, so that's 250 grams of fruit for 
four dessert spoons of yogurt. Uh, obviously that depends on the thickness of your yogurt, how much yogurt you will need. Uh, so it's a case of tasting as you go. Uh, and then a couple of um, dessert spoons of the peach juice, uh, just to let it down to get it to a nice consistency. But I think that's a good ratio. And it makes uh, about half a litre. So that's all right, is that? And I think that's certainly a lot cheaper uh, than, uh, than, than buying mangoes. And mangoes come in kind of tins that are twice that size. So once you bought a tin of mangoes, you kind of committed to using that whole tin of uh, mangoes where a tin of peaches, they're cheap. I don't know, they're, they're about about 30p for, for, for a tin like that. Uh, homemade yogurt, which was just milk. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, that's a good alternative rather than, uh, than making uh, mango lassi. Um, unless you want to make mango lassi, then by all means, uh, buy mango pulp. Uh, you'll always freeze, but I think that's a suitable alternative, and I'm very happy with that. Very happy indeed. I'm going to have that uh, for my breakfast because I ate too much last, last night, uh, and I kind of think I probably need to uh, cut down on what I eat today. Uh, yes, that's it. There we are for now. So that was uh, peach lassi made with homemade yogurt and cheap supermarket peaches. Expensive peaches are available. Uh, slight afterthought, uh, as always. And looking at the consistency of that, I think you could turn that into frozen yogurt. If you had a uh, ice cream maker, I think that would freeze down and you'd get a really kind of quite nice um, frozen yogurt out of that. Or if you haven't got an ice cream maker, then what you simply do is put that in the freezer in a container and every 15, 20 minutes, just go through it with a whisk and just agitate it. So you break up the sugar crystals and then so it doesn't freeze in a solid block. So every 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, go through, break it up a little bit. If it starts getting too thick, get the blender in there and give it like a, a proper, proper puree down or get it in the food processor and give it like a, once it's frozen, give it like a proper pulse in the food processor to really break up those ice crystals. And I think that would make a really excellent uh, frozen yogurt quite easily. Um, what was I gonna say? Yes, so, and also uh, when you freeze things, it tends to heighten the flavor of things. So you've got to be careful. Um, with adding sugar to things so if anything you're going to serve frozen uh, you need to not add as much sugar because when it's frozen it's going to taste certainly more intense than it does when it's um, unfrozen there you go that is today's top tip useful maybe not uh, i am going to save the juice i'll use it for something else uh, when i'm baking some cakes i will pull that on and use it as a syrup and that will be nice as well but there we go that's it for now in fact i probably should um have a go at making the frozen yogurt and then we've got um we've got two recipes for the price of one um and that'll be making a, a nice interesting video so we'll put that in there i'm going to drink some of it because i'm hungry but half of it i'm going to put in a container scoop that out just an experiment i'm not going to make too much You can buy really cheap yogurts in the supermarket. Um, if you're on a budget, they are a, they're a good thing. Uh, however, I do find the ones that cheap supermarket um, yogurts, they're a little bit thin. So I would recommend that if you're doing something like this, you might want to thicken them up slightly by um, straining them through a muslin cloth. So I'm gonna freeze that. We'll see how we go. I've got a lid somewhere. Uh, but I'm gonna freeze that and then every 20 minutes, uh, I'll give it and then agitate it up a little bit with a whisk. Um, and then see if it turns it into nice frozen yogurt. I think it will. I think it will. And if, and if it works out, I think any kind of fruit that you can get in a tin, uh, like pears or uh, cherries or maybe not citrus fruits, uh, but any kind of fruit that you get in a tin uh, that isn't too acidic, I think would make a really nice frozen yogurt. You could probably do the same with cream as well, but I'm rambling. So I'm going to freeze that now and, uh, and we'll see if it turns into nice frozen yogurt update on the uh, frozen yogurt it's it's a bit grainy um, and I think that's down to uh, there not being a lot of sugar in it um, generally ice creams are a lot smoother and frozen yogurts are a lot smoother when they've got uh, a lot of sugar in them or there are products like uh, I'm sure glycerin glycerin sounds about right and there's a product called trimaline uh, which stop things from freezing and you get a much smoother a smoother finish so it's a little bit more like a granita. It's, I wouldn't recommend giving it to kids. They're not gonna like something that's, that's, that's not sweet, sweet. 
um, but I think that's I think that's kind of quite nice. I'll give it a I'm going to see if I can give it a, a bit of a blend with the um, with the hand blender to see if we can break up some of those ice crystals. But it's not going to you're never going to form it into that into balls or anything like that. You're just going to put put that into a container and kind of serve it that way. So we'll put the camera's a bit low. So I'll uh, we'll see if we can uh, mix it up a little bit. Probably becoming a lot smoother as it slightly me slightly melts. You see that the blade's moving a lot easier, so it's breaking up the ice crystals and moving a lot around. So ah, it's becoming it's becoming quite smoother now. So I think I think instead of whisking it up every time, every 20 minutes, I think the idea is best to get like a hand blender in like this and give it a uh, and give it a mix around. And then just before you serve it, probably do the same again. And then that's kind of quite that's kind of quite creamy, is that? That's not too bad at all. Obviously, be careful. Should have unplugged this before I started sticking metal bits in with the blades. But you get the idea. So that on that, it's not making a mess. That's much creamier. Um, yeah. So quite an. I'll taste a little bit. I've already tasted some, so. Yeah, I don't think kids would like that. It's a little bit too sharp, but for an adult, I think that's really nice. Peach flavour comes through really well, and it's quite yogurty as well. But there is a, um, a place in the north of England called Scarborough, and they do a ice cream which is a lemon sorbet on top of vanilla ice cream. It's called a lemon top. They do other flavours as well, but they are famous for um, the um, for the for the for the lemon top, and that's kind of what you do is you get this this sharp lemony. Um, sorbet with a creamy ice cream and it works really 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 well and um, look it up online um, it's a famous thing in the, in, in the north of England and it's kind of quite nice so I think if you wanted to if you're an adult and you've got sophisticated taste buds that's lovely if you can like your things more to be sweeter it's not it's not it's not really going to be for you but have that with some vanilla ice cream and the creaminess and the sweetness of the vanilla ice cream working with that which is kind of quite sharp and fruity would work really well so it was just a little bit of an experiment um i would if i was if i was more interested i'd have more of a go and add more uh, sugar to it but that's for another that's for another day that was just a bit of fun uh, turning a peach lassie peach yogurt lassie into a frozen uh, ice cream it's all right I'm, yeah i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna eat it um, I don't know if it'd be for everyone. We'll see how we go. But there we go. If I decide to have another go at it and make like a proper frozen yogurt, um, we'll see how we go. But that's how I'd start. But it's okay with that. There we go.